So good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. My name is Wen Surajet Pong, and today I will talk about co-infections and the reality of disease in aquacultures. So I will divide my outline of the talk into uh, three uh, sections. The first one is uh, intro introductions. We talk about how the co-infections importance. What is the def definitions of the co-infections, especially in aquacultures? More focus on uh, fish and shrimp. And then we will talk about the importance of the co-infections in fish and shrimp. And definitely uh, the last part is will be on the control and mitigations of the co-infections. How would we reduce the impact to the farmers and improve the productions? So first we would like to identify the definitions of the co-infections. The co-infections or multiple infections mean the infections of the host by two or more genetically different pathogens. And these co-infection would end up in a, uh, two different scenarios. First one is a synergistic uh, co-infections and the other one is a antagonistic co-infections. And the synergistic in co-infections mean you have two or more uh, pathogens and these seem to uh, facilitate or promote each other to cause the disease and make the disease outcome more severities. And for antagonistic co-infections mean one pathogen maybe antagonize the other pathogens or maybe they stimulate the host immunities or uh, make the environments during infections that are present for another pathogens. So they kind of like compete to each others. And these co-infections will have a great impact on the pathogen load, the parasites, eggs, for example, and maybe making the clinical size, uh, uh, the severities of clinical size more uh, uh, difficult to the horse. And also uh, maybe promote some um, bad pathologies and uh, mort high mortalities to the host that have the co-infections. This is some uh, cartoon showing uh, when you have uh, multiple infections and these can alter the cause and the severities, especially in different fish disease and shrimp disease as well. And you will see when you have two pathogens and they seem to be synergistically interactions and these will end up in the enhancement of one or both pathogens and increase the severity of the disease. But the, on the other side, if, if you have uh, two pathogens and they seem to be antagonized to each other, which means one pathogen may be inhibit. The other one or the both pathogen, when they come together, they didn't seem to help each other. And that will maybe seem to benefit the horse because it's the decreasing the severities of the disease. And both of these uh, synergistic and antagonistic could be fine during the co-infections in fish or shrimp disease. This is a table showing the uh, co-infections when you have uh, homologous pathogens, which mean either you have a bacteria uh, two species of bacterial pathogens or two different kinds of uh, viral pathogens or parasitic uh, pa pathogens together during a co-infections. And these homologous co-infections are usually enough could be antagonistic or synergistic. There's kind of like a mix uh, uh, co-infections outcome between these homologous uh, pathogens. And you can you can go to the review and read more details of uh, whether when you have interest in what uh, spe uh, species of the horse and also the pathogens itself. This is another one when you have uh, co-infections by heterologous pathogens. For example, you will see when you have parasite and bacterial co-infections and then you have parasites and viral co-infections 
and then bacterial and viral co-infections in fungal and bacterial co-infections. And uh, what I like to highlight here is that uh, these co-infections will cause all syn synergistic risk uh, uh, outcome because which mean uh, the pathogens itself, one pathogens will help the other one, the second one, and then making an uh, unpleasant uh, to the host when you got these co-infections. And this is quite common as well when you look at in the field, when you have uh, aquacultures. Okay, this is a slide showing the, when you have co-infections in fish. Of course, we know that uh, disease will occur when you have the perfect uh, situation when the pathogens, the host, and the environment benefit together and seem to, you know, when you have a weakened host, you have the presence of the virulence pathogens, and then the bad environment, and then these promote disease to happen. So the co-infection usually come, uh, you know, you have the host and you have the main pathogens. And of course, they already, uh, the, the, the host already exposed to many commensal and opportunistic uh, um, micro, micro that presence in the aquaculture environment. So when you uh, have a very immunosuppressed or sick animals, by the first pathogens, which is a main uh, pathogen, so the virus one, the opportunistic come and then making or worsening the disease. And I will show some example in the later later and also from our research showing that when you have the co-infections, many times you end up with uh, a bad, uh, more severities. Okay, so environment, multiple stressors, these will moderate in their interactions and pathogenesis of the pathogens. So I'd like to show some example of, uh, we work on tilapia disease and we usually see uh, uh, a syndrome called tilapia one month mortality syndromes or TOMS. And this happening because of uh, many times uh, in aquacultures like in Thailand or other countries, we grow the animals in open environment. And the realities of open environment is that uh, animals like fish will expose to uh, pathogens or environments all the time, day and night. And these will making them susceptible if something happenings, like stress happenings or whatever. And when we collect the fish and exam what would be the cause of the mortalities, we you can see in this on the right slide here that uh, there are many multiple bacterial infections uh, in the first month of uh, tilapia stock in the, in the liver, like aromanes, Phalobacterium, Streptococcus, and they did come to they come in together even the parasites. This is some of the picture showing when you have a mortalities, you get the, the fish for uh, exams. Uh, we will see uh, many parasites like Ticodina, Gyrodactylus, uh, and Dactylogyrus. Um, also, when if you take the materials and grow in the plate, you will see uh, many species, different species of uh, bacterial pathogens could grow on the plate. And that suggests that well, if you have to deal with uh, real situations, commonly there's not one pathogens. You usually will see a lot of different kind of pathogens in the same outbreaks. Okay. So I like to more highlight on the uh, importance of the co-infections in fish and trim. Okay. And this is uh, the stage of the tilapia and then the disease that we put in the table from the eggs, zero grams, to the market size at one kilograms. You will see uh, at different stage of the fish, you will see a different kind of uh, pathogens, parasites, viruses, and bacteria. So these have been uh, some inter uh, overlap 
during some stage. Like in the when a small fish, you will see uh, flower bacterial infections and francisella could happen a little while. When you have a bigger fish, like uh, from uh, 15 to uh, 1 kilograms, you will see uh, have a streptococcosis. And then we have a different novel virus and uh, other uh, common bacteria like Allomonas as well. So you see that situation, you have a, a, a particular age and you will have uh, many pathogens come up uh, happening at the same time. So that could happen. Yeah, this is uh, some example um, in the under laboratories uh, study showing if you have, uh, uh, if you challenge the flowers with the virus itself, they not cause mortalities much. Okay, over here, a little mortality is at 20%. But then when we have heterologous and co-infections, we challenge the fish with the virus together with the bacteria, you can see uh, they'll die very rapidly within three to four days and all, all the fish die 100%. But uh, I forget to mention that if you got bacteria uh, alone, like a Ribeo or a Bacilla, you will see uh, the mortality is still high, but not to 100%. So when in these situations, uh, when you have co-infections, the outcome is that you will get almost lose all the stock of uh, the fish. This is another slide showing that when you get a carp edema virus, this will cause immunosuppressions. And these immunosuppressions to the host will make them, the fish, uh, highly susceptible to other infections like other parasites and other bacteria. So when we visit the farms or go to uh, hatchery or aquaculture uh, farms, you will see the this is would commonly see with the uh, very moribund fish. And if you uh, looking deeply exam these, you will see that there's not only the parasites will probably see bacteria and the virus itself. So the virus may be behind all the co uh, many co-infections because they cause a strong immune suppression. This is another study uh, in Thailand when we first investigate uh, the outbreak of a novel virus named Tilapia Lake virus. And we collect 32 outbreaks uh, from the fields when you have a very high mortalities of tilapia throughout the country, this is a map of Thailand, we collect uh, 32 outbreaks. And what we observe here is you got some ectoparasites, you get many, back, in many cases, you have uh, allomonas and flower bacteria infections, and then you get a virus infections as well. Some may be a very single infection, but mostly we'll see uh, co-infection between fowl bacterium and TLV and uh, Allomonas and TLV as well. So when you have co-infections, usually we'll see higher mortalities in this situation. So we asked uh, more details to see what happened if you have a co-infections between tilapia lake virus and Allomonas or bacterial. So we investigate the farm, tilapia farms that have extensive loss and uh, very high mortalities. And then we also do this lab challenge. I will show you in a second what happening. And then we evaluate mortalities, pathologies, and bacterial and viral load. In this. And this is from the farm, okay, from the field outbreaks. Uh, we got to start with a good uh, observations, very interesting. Um, the, all of these fish are collected from the same ponds. I mean, uh, from the same ponds or from the same uh, floating cages. You will see that some maybe look very normal. You see the colors, you see the appearance of the internal organs, but some look very sick, like 
they look very pale with the uh, organs look um, look really bad but the one that look very bad you will see it you will get the uh, positive for the virus this is we run the pcr to check that and also we will get many times uh, co-infection with the bacteria same thing here this is from different farms the sick fat the sick fish they look uh, very pale they didn't eat anything so they look lethargies and also uh, the face is very red okay because of the infections and then we've got many bacterial flow on the uh, agar and also they are positive to the virus okay and we divide that the one with the single infections of course you can see we got like 39 percent but the co-infections is uh, almost very equal between uh, 31 percent as well most commonly aeromonas and streptococcus so we ask another question we take the fish to the lab and then you know the naive fish and then we take the pathogens and then challenge between the bacteria alone the virus alone and then together and we use a, a difference those of uh, the bacteria to see what happened. And what I like to highlight here, okay, before that, we, we challenge the virus first and then with the bacteria at three days later on. We found that the one with single infections mortality is very a bit lower, quite lower than when you have a co infections. When you have a co infections, the, the mortality is very high. Okay. And when we look for bacterial burdens and viral burdens, you will see that uh, in the groups that you have a co-infections. This is co-infection with 10 to the 6 and then 10 to the 7. And this is a virus itself, the bacteria and the bacteria at the higher concentrations. You see that if you challenge the fish as enough, Presentation, you can isolate the, we isolate the bacteria back. But then, when we have the virus uh, pre challenge, you will see more ba bacteria could be isolated from these groups and suggesting that maybe the virus caused some uh, interactions. Maybe they suppress the host immunities and then that help the bacteria to colonize into the host organs. When we look for pathologies, uh, you will see this is a, 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 a normal liver, you see a hepatocytes and sinusoids. And then when we have bacteria, we see some necrosis and de degenerations of hepatic sinusoids. And then when we have the virus, you start is also seeing that the cell morphology change but the uh, pathology seem a very worsens when we have the virus together with the bacteria. We see more uh, syncytial cells, and we also see uh, more degenerative cells as well in the co-infections. And in the screens, uh, the control look uh, very good with the red and white. And then with the bacterial challenge, we see more multiple full size of uh, necrosis and also uh, 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 melanomacrophage centers accumulations with the virus uh, and the bacteria there will even more severe pathologies uh, through uh, entire organs with a severe depletion of the red blood cells and also uh, extensive accumulations of uh, melanomacrophage centers and that together from uh, mortalities, uh, pathogen burdens and also pathologies all together suggest that uh, fish that have the co-infections by tilapia lake virus and aeromonas will make them more uh, uh, badly uh, susceptible to mortalities. And this is, I take it from human and showing that uh, 
so maybe some mechanistics that uh, explain the interactions between the virus and the bacteria. When you have the in influenza infections that seem to trigger the interferon systems and then led to the IL-13s, which will suppress uh, uh, interferon gamma expressions. And this doesn't seem to uh, be a benefit much uh, later on when you have six to seven days because of the, the interferon productions will suppress different kinds of cytokines. And these will require to, uh, to make uh, the immune cells uh, be able to control the bacteria. So in these situations, the uh, antiviral uh, response that are triggered by the influ influenza infection seem to have a negative impact to the antibacterial response in the host, which means that the macrophage and phagocytes may be uh, either down or uh, place to control the bacteria and you'll get a super bacterial infections in this scenario. Maybe that's explained when you have a co-infections between the virus, and that seems to promote prom uh, bacterial infections. But definitely, there are many mechanisms that could explain the uh, response of the synergistic or antagonistic uh, co-infections. And I, I just uh, highlight some of the co-infections in trim. Uh, there's not much a study uh, compared to the fish, but of course, the, when you give the uh, shrimp with uh, virus and also bacteria, you could see the similar scenarios that um, when we have a high, uh, the white spot uh, co-infections, uh, you will see that uh, there's more virus, right, because of the uh, lower expressions of several uh, innate immunity genes in the multiple infection groups. And these will be seen like a synergistic uh, co-infections. The other way around, in another study, they show that uh, when they give the white spot and together with the reveals, okay, at the same time, so they, these one will, get, will be given at the same time. They seem to be antagonistic response. So, because of they could file the lower mortalities in the co-infected trim, comparing to single infected uh, white spot alone, because of uh, they found, they show that they because of higher gill immune enzyme activities is upregulated in the co-infected trim. So you will see that there could be a different uh, uh, outcome between the homologous or heterologous co-infections. So, and then finally, I like to give some ideas of the mitigations of the co-infections, okay? There are different strategies that we can use to uh, limit the loss or negative impact by the control, uh, by the co-infections. For example, on the horse, we know that if you make the host stronger, okay, they have better health, they have a good immunities like vaccines, feed additive, probiotics, immunomodulator, these could be promoted to fish health. And that will make them less susceptible to the disease. Even you have pathogens, you have microbes in the environment. Or you, we can implement uh, some biosecurities, like preventing the pathogens, especially the one that more serious to that host, to come to the uh, our environment to to the farms. Okay, maybe we can use disinfections. Okay, kill any kind of pathogens that will come up into the into the farm. Uh, there are several strategies using like monitorings regularly to the fish health. If you keep monitor the fish, see when they are susceptible, or before that we use some of the implementations to make them less stressed and in a good health. 
But if the disease happenings in the farms, you need to properly manage either remove, the, you know, not do it like in the picture here, they just throw the fish in the cages and they will spread the pathogens, right? The bad pathogens in the environment. So uh, a back, better practice is collect these dead fish as soon as possible and then properly destroy the, the carcass, either dig a hole and then uh, cover that. Okay. Or we can use uh, vaccines and some species uh, like salmon, tilapia, trout. Uh, we have uh, several vaccines available. The vaccine will stimulate, of course, a specific immunities to that disease. But if you think about if you reduce the stress, uh, the pressures of one disease to your horse, right? The other co-infections may be making them difficult to establish the infections because you already eliminate one factor. So if we identify the vaccines that would be important to that particular species, that will help, okay? The vaccine also will help the limit the loss from the co-infection. Um, if we don't have the vaccines, uh, the other ways, uh, feed additives or other uh, uh, substance that we can implement, have, uh, add that to uh, fish or shrimp feed to promote the health, okay? Uh, we have some uh, studies a couple years ago showing that if you supplement some feed additive uh, into tilapia feed. And this is, uh, we've done this experiment in the farm that have TRV outbreak. And like I said, many, many situations when you have the virus, you will have secondary bacterial infections. And what I like to point out, we sampling several times uh, during the growing period, like every month. And then at one particular time point, uh, like one or two months, we faced the outbreak of the virus, okay? And we found that the group that we add on uh, the treatment have less uh, uh, prevalence of the TRV than the group, than the control groups, okay? Uh, uh, sorry, less prevalence of the bacteria, not the TRV. And also we found that the group that uh, we supplement the additive into the feed have also less parasites as well, okay? Even these control and treatment groups still face the same situation where they have the TRV infections, okay? Then we compare the average body weight between the control and treatment. Treatment seem a bit better at the end of the, the trial you get a bit higher weight compared to the control group, but this is, I believe, not significant, if I remember correctly. And then when we look at the survival between the control and the treatment, we found that the treatment have a better survival. And of course, that will end up to a better FCR, like 10, 11.6%. So that's, uh, the supplementations not only promote the health and also improve the survival and FCR of the fish as well. This is another story. Uh, we add the probiotics to uh, tilapia and uh, feed and then challenge with the TLV. And we found that uh, when the fish were feed with the probiotics, they have a lower mortality after the viral challenge. So the 1% supplementations and 0.5% supplementations have like 10% uh, less mortality than the control groups. And also when we look at the, the amount of the virus in the, in the screen, you will see uh, 
in the liver as well and the kidney, you will see that the one that we supplement with 1% probiotics have the best with the less virus concentrations, which means we don't know the mechanism, but at least you, this is uh, showing that uh, the supplementations uh, of the probiotics could alleviate the viral infections. Also, you can uh, try to manage the ponds, putting lamps after uh, dry the ponds to kind of like reduce uh, the amount of uh, uh, pathogens in the environments and clean up the ponds. And uh, the daily uh, biosecurity practice, like uh, clean, disinfecting and clean the shoes that you um, from one. Uh, locations to another locations that will kill and limit how this pathogen will transmit from one to another location. And of course, any equipment uh, net should be properly stored and disinfecting as well. I like to summarize and conclude my talk here. I show you some of the um, importance of the co-infections in aquacultures and these co-infections could be happening when the animals have uh, multiple infections by more than one pathogens and these will affect the outcome of infections and many times they are overlooked by either not only by the researcher but also by the farmers so the co-infections could be uh, synergistics and that mostly like that and also antagonistic uh, uh, the outcomes, and that will affect the clinical signs, mortalities, pathogen burdens, bacteria, the virus, and then the trading and persistence of the pathogens in the uh, uh, animal populations. So, better ways we need to manage and control these co-infections or prevent secondary infections, and that will greatly benefit the farmers. I talk about several strategies of, you know, basic uh, biosecurity practice that will help to improve and uh, limit the uh, co-infections. So thank you very much for your attentions and I'm happy to answer your questions.